Good afternoon. This is uh, Earth, <coughs> our planet, with its um, oceans and <coughs> continents, with uh, 7 billion people. That means 7 billion living human bodies, and that makes a lot of human mass. This human mass is being used by viruses and bacteria as a feeding grounds, causing infectious diseases. Infectious diseases are playing an evolutionary game with us, a game on life and death. Plague has killed half, nearly half of the European population in the, um, in the Middle Ages. Spanish flu has killed 100 million people hardly a century ago, which is the equivalent of 100 Hiroshima bombs. And Ebola is just a striking example of new diseases on the rise. Now, back to the individual level. All people, all, all individuals, as you are sitting here in the room, you have three ways to escape diseases. The first way is to, to keep a physical distance, because physical distance always is the best possible uh, protection against any danger. The second way of escape is being hygienic, that means washing your hands and so on. The third way of escape is be sure that you get your vaccinations because vaccinations are artificial infections and <clears throat> hence um, it's, it's mimicking nature and mimicking nature is always a smart thing to do. Mimicking nature leads always to a better solution. However, <clears throat> many people uh, are not being vaccinated uh, around the world. Tens of millions of people do not get their vaccinations. And <clears throat> how does it come that those tens of millions cannot be reached with vaccines? And that is because of, um, <clears throat> of the logistics of the, of the current system using syringes and needles. And because the, these people cannot be reached, common diseases like tetanus and diphtheria can play their evolutionary game with those people, killing every day 18,000 of them. The reason why the logistics are not, uh, <clears throat> do not reach all those people is that it's a huge logistics of the syringes, which is, contains the vials, syringes, and those need to be transported from the site of manufacturing to, uh, to the medical centers in the, in the countries. And from there, in fact, the vaccines need to be distributed further around the countries. The biggest problem in the logistics, however, is the cold chain. That means vaccines need to be transported from the vaccine manufacturing until the moment of injection. Uh, they need to be transported and kept cool at a cool temperature, about four degrees Celsius. And it appears impossible that that, that that happens. That means that all those people, tens of millions, maybe more than 100 million people, cannot be reached with effective vaccines. So what is needed is a a different vaccination technology, a technology that is much smaller, that, uh, <clears throat> that does not need a cold chain. And that is where I like to come in as a veterinarian. I have vaccinated uh, during my time many millions of, uh, of animals using syringes and needles. And then I... <clears throat> And also that is necessary for keeping healthy animals. And during my work, literally with my boots in the mud, I got an idea to, um, uh, <clears throat> to replace those 
needles, by biodegradable injection needles, biodegradable implants, in fact, and to fill them with thermostable vaccines and have them applied at high velocity through the skin. So I started experimenting, and after a couple of years, I had a handful of prototypes of bioneedles, uh, which I took just with my, my finger and I pushed those through the skin on the ear of some, some piglets. And I noticed that after a couple of minutes, those bioneedles started to soften. And again, a couple of minutes later, these bioneedles had almost gone. Afterwards, I have um, <clears throat> loaded those prototypes of bioneedles with a vaccine and have them applied at high velocity to, to animals. And after a couple of weeks, I took some blood samples and it was a very nice um, immune response that was visible in the blood. And such a response, an immune response, is the best possible indication that vaccine pre-filled bioneedles might well work. However, it was a very expensive hobby, and I left the hobby for a while until I got the chance to present bioneedle, my, my concept, to the World Health Organization in Geneva. And still during the, uh, my presentation, people of, of the World Health Organization told me that if I was able to adapt the bioneedle concept for use in humans, then bioneedles would solve all the problems UNICEF has and the other organizations such as Doctors Without Borders. So I went home, um, I had to think. I found some funds, quit practice and start my own laboratory. And after a couple of years, I, I have been able to, uh, to produce, uh, to, to establish the production processes of the biomaterial and of the, uh, of the bioneedles. This is a bioneedle. I'm going to show you. It's a very small bioneedle. You may not see it, and that's exactly what I want to do. <laughs> But there you see on the picture. And also I have developed a laboratory model of, a, of, a, of an instrument, a medical instrument, uh, to apply those bioneedles. And actually this applicator I have used several times in my own arms and in my own leg. And I discovered that the application of bioneedles at high velocity really is pain-free. And also on my arm, I could, I could feel that after several minutes, uh, the bioneedles had gone. Eighteen volunteers have confirmed also in an official trial that the procedure of applying bioneedles really is pain-free. Then we have proven that we can incorporate vaccines in bioneedles and make the vaccines thermostable. We did such with tetanus toxoid, which is a common vaccine, and which we have proven to be stable at 60 degrees Celsius, so 6O. And the same also for hepatitis B, which is also stable at, at 60 degrees Celsius. The way in which we do that is by incorporating the active substance of vaccines in a type of material which is not the same as, but looks like these amber stones, in which also insects can be, um, can be uh, contained. And these, have, <coughs> these animals are already for many millions, uh, date for many millions uh, years ago. And it works uh, very well. So we have done also a trial with uh, another vaccine. We have filled bioneedles with that vaccine, have sent the bioneedles around the world on a trip outside the cold chain in a backpack from the Netherlands to South America, to Mexico, to the Middle East. And at our return, the bioneedles with the vaccine inside were still 100% stable. That means that they could have been used. Whereas the commercial product, um, the liquid vaccine, had lost all, its, all of its activity and could no longer be used. In the next step, we have proven that, sorry, this is, these are graphics um, of the temperature we have measured 
during the trip of those biennials around the world. And you see several tens of temperature changings, changes from uh, a freezing minus 33 degrees Celsius to a hot 48 degrees Celsius. Then we have incorporated a new vaccine candidate against tuberculosis and in bioneedles and have proven that that new vaccine candidate is very effective in an animal model, at least as good as a currently used BCG, which is a current used uh, by tuberculosis vaccine. And it is very important to have a very good uh, vaccine against tuberculosis because the tuberculosis bacterium is one of those bacteria, one of those infectious diseases that is extremely successful in using the human mass as a feeding ground. Two billion people are carrier of the tuberculosis uh, bacterium. That means that every third person here in this room could be a carrier. So <clears throat> we have established that we can produce biomaterial, that we can produce the bio, the bio needles, that we can incorporate and make thermostable vaccines, that we can apply the, the vaccine pre-filled bio needles in a pain-free way to, way to people, and most importantly, the total is the bio needle concept works. And that is the stage of development we have reached right now. And I'd like to thank from here all the more than 100 people in the past years who have contributed to the stage of development we have reached right now. What we need to do right now is to, to make just one more big leap, and it is testing vaccine pre-filled bioneedles in people. That's called a clinical trial. So what we need to do is a clinical trial. And with your support, we will be able to have the first uh, biennials available within four to five years. Having established the concept as itself, how can bioneedles reach those tens of millions of people or more than 100 million people who cannot be reached with vaccines due to the, the, the limitations of the syringe and cold chain system? Instead of that we do that in two, in two ways. Instead of a huge logistics uh, with the syringes and the vials and the cold chain, we reduce those logistics to almost nothing. On this picture, you see a pellet on which uh, several tens of thousands of bioneedles uh, are loaded. And all these doses, so tens, of, do, uh, tens of thousands of doses of bioneedles fit in, just the, in the backpack I show you here. That means that from the vaccine manufacturing site, it will be possible to send vaccines around the world to all the distribution centers in the different countries just by using a regular post or by using the overnight couriers so that in a matter of hours or days, the vaccines are arrived at the distribution centers. And from the distribution centers in the different countries, it will be possible that local people using their own motorbikes and bicycles or even on foot can reach all those people around the countries, also in the most remote villages and in the most remote tribes uh, without a cold chain. And all those people who now are out outside the reach of the cold chain. Besides the advantages of the, of the logistics, the easy logistics, uh, the no cold chain, uh, the fact that it is very fast and pain free, there are also other um, advantages. There is no wastage. That means nowadays, due to the failing cold chain, hundreds of millions of doses of vaccines are wasted and can no longer be used. We have no, no, um, no needle stick injuries. Every healthcare worker who is involved in vaccination sticks himself or herself at least four times a year while recapping uh, the needle. And then at that moment, uh, there's a high risk of infection of hepatitis B or hepatitis C or, 
or AIDS. And we have no waste. The bio needle disappears beneath the skin and we leave no waste. Whereas with the syringes and used needles, it's a, a lot of, of um, it's a, a high cost to dispose of this, um, of this waste. The speed <clears throat> of application has very important uses for practice. For example, one with a vaccinator. With one vaccinator, one applicator, uh, 1,000 people can be vaccinated in just one hour. Whereas normally speaking, when using syringes, maximum 30 to 40 people can be vaccinated. So using the bioneal system will allow to a team of about 50 vaccinators to vaccinate a whole refugee camp with 100,000 people in just one day. And if a Ebola vaccine had been available, and if bioneedles had been available, then the combination product, Ebola vaccine in bioneedles, would have made it possible to vaccinate a country like Liberia or Sierra Leone just in one or two days. Cutting off the outbreak of the disease, preventing the panics and preventing big economic losses and social disruption. So what is needed <clears throat> is a different vaccination technology. Going back to the to the, the, the to our planet. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, <clears throat> infectious diseases are playing the evolutionary game. And <clears throat> thanks to, uh, apparently, syringes and needles are not able to, to reach all those people, um, to protect all the people. However, bio-needles are being designed just to achieve what is needed, and that is universal vaccination. With bioneedles, it will be possible to reach all people with life-saving vaccines. And hence, bioneedle will help to contribute to a more sustainable world population. Thank you. <clears throat>